systems, economic, and financial literacy. Uh, with the famous speaker today, Dr. Iman Sofyan Suryana Nata MBA from the College University of Economic Jakarta. And then Associate Professor Yusuf Haji Usman from uh, UNISHAM, University of Sultan Abdul Halim Shah uh, Kedah, Malaysia. Uh, I think uh, you will to use English, Malay or Indonesia language, no problem, because uh, many participants are familiar with the three language, right? Boleh guna bahasa Malay, boleh guna bahasa Indonesia, boleh guna English, boleh campur-campur pun boleh. <laughs> uh, for your information, this even not conference, not international seminar, but international share lecture series. Like we share the lecture in our class, in our campus. But right now, we share with digital, therefore many students or many people can to follow uh, what the topic we will to share. Oleh karena itu, kawan-kawan semua yang join, mari kita gunakan masa dengan baik untuk mendapatkan the new experience, the new knowledge, kongsi ilmu, kata orang Malaysia. Jadi Bapak Iman dan uh, Tuan Yusuf, sebagaimana sudah hari ini, tadi pagi pun saya buat perkara yang sama dengan oleh Universiti uh, Islam, eh, dengan Universiti Kuala Lumpur, sorry, tadi pagi dengan Esa Unggul University, yang tadi sudah saya share dekat WhatsApp itu uh, topiknya juga uh, terkait dengan uh, bisnis ya, eh, after uh, COVID pandemic. Oke, okay, uh, kita ada lima rondonya atau itinerinya. Yang pertama, welcoming speak for me as the chairman of ASEAN Laser Community. And the second, there is a official video from ASEAN Lecture Committee, only three minutes. Jadi kalau nak tahu apa itu ASEAN Lecture Committee, boleh dilihat nanti dalam video yang pendek, yang singkat itu. Kemudian yang ketiga, kita akan terus pergi kepada sharing session of the speaker. Kalau saya lihat dari namanya, Pak Iman, Sofian, Surya Winata, uh, Cik, ataupun Tuan Yusuf, Haji Usmana, itu uh, alfabetisnya dimulai dari A ya, Pak Iman. <laughs> Oleh karena itu, Pak Imannya kena bagi sharing awal. Dan yeah. kemudian the second speaker nanti dari Pak Yusuf. Nah, question answer itu uh, akan uh, kita... Uh, bacakan uh, lepas kedua-dua speaker uh, sharing. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, you can to use chat box for you share your question or you can uh, send to my email address uh, no problem if you will. I will to share my email in chat box. Uh, I think uh, I have to share or oh, before I, I, I can to uh, look more. Oleh karena itu, karena ini forum Snowlet Silaturahim, jadi kita nak enjoy dan fun saja. Jadi tak payah terlalu buat terlalu apa ya penat lah. Ini, ini namanya kongsi ilmu kan. Jadi uh, relax and fun. Okay. Uh, therefore, we start this event with the breakfast pukul 1.30 atau pukul 2.30 Malaysia. Kita mulai dengan doa. Menurut keyakinan masing-masing dipersilakan. Bisa. Bisa. Terima kasih. Uh, the first, uh, once more, thank you. Official video. Okay, right now tanpa membuang masa lagi, kita akan menjemput, mengundang Dr. Iman Sofian Surya Winata MBA. As the first speaker, please, waktunya 30 hingga 35 menit. <laughs> Boleh diguna. Silakan. Ya, baik, terima kasih uh, Pak Reza. Uh, I will share my slide. Right. Okay. 
ada co-host right now. Okay, right now I look uh, very clear and very nice with the gold color. <laughs> <laughs> it's about okay. money. Pa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity, uh, Pak right. Reza. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on this occasion, uh, I would like to talk about uh, financial literacy. Uh, with is uh, a subtitle of uh, a key to personal financial freedom. Uh, basically, I don't uh, actually I don't prepare uh, many slides, uh, less than uh, 20 slides. Uh, but perhaps uh, from what uh, I'm going to present, uh, there would be uh, many uh, questions uh, uh, which I expect uh, from the uh, audience. Uh, these are the topics that uh, I'm going to uh, be presenting. Uh, the first one is about uh, financial literacy, uh, definition and why is, uh, it is important, and then uh, indicators of uh, financial literacy, components of financial literacy, and uh, some fundamental uh, financial concepts. Well, uh, I would like to avoid uh, the technicalities because uh, if we talked about uh, finance, then uh, basically uh, we are going to use a lot of uh, mathematics, but uh, then again, uh, maybe uh, we don't have uh, uh, much time uh, to discuss about the technique, the, the financial techniques. So maybe I will just uh, give some uh, illustration about uh, some uh, important uh, financial concepts uh, which are necessary for us, uh, you know, uh, to plan uh, all financial uh, affairs. And uh, we will be discussing also about the benefits of uh, having financial literacy. Uh, and then uh, after that, uh, some sources of financial stress and uh, what steps uh, we can do to uh, stay uh, remove uh, those uh, financial stresses. And then finally, uh, some tips uh, on managing uh, your money. So this is the definition of uh, financial literacy. So basically, financial literacy is a combination. Uh, it is a combination of awareness, knowledge, skill, attitude, and behavior uh, relating to uh, you know uh, the subject of finance necessary to make uh, sound financial decisions and uh, ultimately uh, achieve uh, what we call uh, financial individual financial uh, well-being. So this uh, definition, uh, I take it from uh, OECD definition. Yeah. And why is it important? Uh, because uh, it helps people to become independent, self-sufficient, better prepared for the future, especially nowadays with the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and less uh, vulnerable to fraud. Also uh, being financially literate, uh, it is a skill. It is a skill that brings uh, forth uh, an assortment of benefits that can improve the standard of living, uh, through uh, an increase in financial uh, stability. Uh, well, not only stability, but also uh, financial uh, resilience. Financial uh, resilience. Resilience. I hope my spelling is right. So uh, over time, we expect that, uh, you know, our wealth is uh, growing uh, over time. Uh, in line with, with our age. Uh, and uh, this is the picture of a lady. Why a lady? Uh, well, uh, uh, women uh, are a special creature. They help us men uh, uh, remain at check. Uh, they keep us under control because, uh, you know, uh, men uh, tend to think uh, in terms of sh uh, uh, short, short run. Uh, but uh, women, they, they think uh, very long term. Uh, they think about uh, the, the, the children, uh, uh, grandchildren, and sometimes uh, up to uh, seven descendants. 
seven level descendants uh, down the uh, family tree. Uh, so the, the, that's uh, uh, how special uh, about, about women. And uh, this is the indicators of financial uh, literacy. Uh, the first one is the financial awareness and then uh, financial knowledge and skills, and then uh, attitudes uh, towards finance and money, and then financial behavior, and how we uh, manage our financial risk, and how we develop financial culture, and finally, uh, how we can use e-finance. So uh, nowadays, we have what we call mobile, mobile banking, mobile banking. And we could do financial transaction by using a handphone. Yeah, by using a handphone, uh, we could uh, we could do uh, our uh, financial transactions such as uh, opening a bank bank account, buying securities, uh, let's say corporate bonds, government bonds, something like that. So uh, it is very important uh, for people nowadays to know how uh, uh, to do financial transactions uh, using uh, uh, digital banking. And uh, this is the definition uh, of each uh, indicators. Uh, financial awareness, uh, it is a knowledge or perception or conciseness of one's financial situation. So we have to be aware uh, about our financial uh, situation. Uh, are we in good shape or are we in, in bad shape? Uh, so if we know that we are in bad shape in terms of uh, financial condition, then uh, it is uh, a good start. So uh, uh, the thing that uh, we need to do next is how to we shape up so that uh, we can uh, you know, improve our financial uh, uh, condition. And then uh, what is meant by financial knowledge? It is an understanding about the financial concepts, procedures and products, as well as how to use uh, this understanding to solve uh, financial problems. And this financial knowledge is related to financial skill. Uh, we will have a good financial skill if we have, uh, you know, if you have uh, a good uh, financial knowledge. And what is uh, financial skill? Uh, it is uh, an ability to use various financial knowledge to solve uh, either financial problems or attain uh, financial goals. Like let's say uh, having uh, a house, let's say within 10 years after employment. And what is financial attitude? It is a state of mind, opinion, or judgment about a person, uh, judgment of a person oh, about yeah. uh, is, is finance important or it is uh, unimportant or, or do we think that finance will take care, will take care of itself? And uh, this financial attitude will be reflected in our uh, behavior uh, relating to uh, a, uh, financial affairs. And uh, financial behavior is uh, a behavior in relation to the management of a person's savings, expenditure, and budget. And uh, these are the components of uh, financial uh, literacy. Uh, it starts with self-motivation. And this self-motivation uh, uh, brings us to the purpose of life. Purpose of life. And uh, finance as a means. And finance as a means. To achieve, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, uh, personal objectives, personal objectives. So we start with uh, budget planning. How is our consumption habit and how we manage our debt? And then uh, can we uh, make uh, a savings? Can we put aside some money for savings? And uh, how we are going to invest uh, those money that we saved? And then how we manage uh, 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 risk, uh, our uh, risk in life, and finally, uh, how is our uh, retirement plans? So these are all the uh, important components of uh, financial literacy, and uh, it will be uh, reflected uh, in our conducts uh, relating to our uh, financial affairs. 
Uh, these are some uh, fundamental financial concepts uh, which must be understood uh, uh, by all people, I guess. Uh, uh, the first one is the principle of the time value of money. Uh, with the time value of money, we can uh, transfer uh, financial resources across time and space. We're actually not, not only financial resources, but all kinds of resources. All kinds of resources. Provided that it can be monetized. It can be monetized. Anything that can be monetized could be uh, transferred uh, between present and future. And then uh, the second one is the relationship among inflation, nominal interest rate, and real interest rate. Uh, very important for us to understand about uh, inflation. And then uh, things that cannot be avoided in our life is interest rates, uh, whether it is short-term rate or long-term rate, and a fixed rate or floating rate. And then a relationship between uh, interest rates and bond price. Uh, we have bond price, uh, bond is actually, uh, it is uh, an investment instrument. Investment instrument. Investment instrument. And then uh, we have to understand the relationship between risk and return. And finally, in a globalized uh, economy, we have to understand the dynamics of uh, foreign exchange rates. So this is the power of com compounding uh, relating to the concept of the time frame of money. So uh, if we have $100 today, and we want to invest it in for three years and earn an interest of 10% per annum, then the question is uh, how much uh, our money would be in, uh, in the year three, at the end of year three. So by applying this formula, then uh, our money will be growing to 133 uh, and 10 dollars uh, by the end of year three. That's the power of compounding. And then uh, how we can transfer uh, our future income to present value. Uh, we can do it uh, through borrowing by applying the present value formula. So if we expect to earn $100 three years from now, uh, then the question is how much uh, could we borrow presently uh, if the interest rate uh, is 10% per annum. So basically we could uh, borrow 75 uh, and 13 cents now and then repay back the loan uh, uh, at year three, uh, uh, the principal amount. And then uh, concerning the relationship between uh, among inflation, nominal interest and interest rate, we have to know uh, the Fisher formula, the Fisher effect formula. Uh, this is the formula, the simplified formula. This is the simplified formula, simplified formula where I is the nominal uh, interest rate, R is the real interest rate, yeah. and pi is the expected inflation. So if the nominal interest rate is 3.75% per annum, and the expected inflation is 3% per annum, then the real interest rate is 0.75% uh, per annum. So if we invest in a, a financial asset that earns interest of 3.75% and the actual inflation is 5%, then the real interest rate is negative, which is a negative 1.25%. So basically we are getting poorer. Uh, whereas inflation eliminates our interest income as well as erodes the value of our financial asset. So beware of inflation. And then regarding the short-term and long-term rates, uh, this is the picture uh, of the relationship between uh, short-term interest rates uh, represented by the 10-year uh, treasury notes, US treasury notes, and uh, the short-term uh, interest rate uh, represented by the three-month uh, treasury bills. 
uh, we can see that uh, short-term interest rate is declining. Uh, this is declining, while uh, long-term interest rate is uh, increasing. So uh, what does this tell us? Well, basically from the graph, uh, we could conclude that interest rate is expected to increase uh, in the long run. But uh, on the other hand, we also see from the graph that the spread between long-term interest rate and uh, short-term interest rate is increasing. It is increasing. This is the spread uh, compared to, let's say, uh, 2020 or 2090. Uh, so uh, it indicates that uh, there is an increasing risk aversion for long-term investment. So looking at the graph of uh, these interest rates, uh, which is uh, short-term versus long-term, then the question is, what would you do? Would you invest uh, long-term or would you invest uh, short-term? Uh, the answer depends uh, on your, uh, let's say, uh, risk appetite. And then we also have uh, fixed uh, versus floating rates. So what rate uh, would you choose? So these are the benefits of having a uh, loan in fixed rates. And these are the benefits of having uh, a floating rate uh, for uh, borrowing from bank. So uh, if we uh, have fixed rate loan from a bank, then actually uh, the interest rate remains fixed irrespective of the market conditions. And it, if uh, it gives us certainty and security. But uh, what are the disadvantages? The disadvantages that it, it is usually expensive. Uh, it is one to 2.5% uh, uh, above the uh, floating rate. And uh, having a floating rate loan, the benefit is it is cheaper. And uh, over a long period, interest may fall. If we borrow, if we borrow when interest rate is high. Is high. So when interest is high, is high, it's better for you to borrow uh, with floating rate. But when interest rate is low, and it's better for you to lock in the interest rate and borrow uh, long term with fixed rate. Uh, what are the disadvantages of having a floating rate loan? Uh, well, actually, uh, it is making us difficult to make a financial planning. So that's the pros and cons uh, between fixed rates and floating rates. But then again, uh, it depends on, uh, on each individual choosing. And this is the illustration of the impact of an increase in market uh, interest rate. Uh, suppose we have a short-term bond and uh, we also have a long-term bond. Uh, the, the nominal value is the same. A hundred uh, million dollars with maturity of five years for the uh, relatively short-term bond, and then uh, ten years from the relatively uh, longer-term bond. And the coupon for the short term is five percent, uh, and it means that we will be uh, getting uh, five million per annum from the coupon. Uh, and if the market rate is four percent, then the bond price uh, would be one hundred four. 0.5 uh, million dollars. Yeah. And if the market rates increases by 2%, then the new bond price will decline to 95.79 million dollars. So the short term bond price decreases by 8.29%. On the other hand, uh, the long term bond. Uh, the initial price would be $107.36 million uh, with the increase in interest rate uh, for long-term interest rate from 8% to, uh, from 6% to 8%. Uh, uh, then the price would decline to $93.29 million, uh, which means that the long-term bond price uh, decreases by 13.11%. Uh, 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 so uh, from this uh, calculation, uh, we can conclude that long-term bond is here. Long-term bond is riskier 
then short and long. Uh, but then again, if it is riskier, then by definition, uh, it will also have a higher potential uh, return. So think if the interest rate falls, if rate falls, if market rate falls, long-term bond will have larger capital gain. Okay, there and, is a uh, six minute more. Oh yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, this is the basic relationship between uh, uh, risk and return. So basically there is no free runs. Uh, if we uh, invest in low risk, then we will get uh, low return. Uh, and if we invest in high risk financial instruments, then we will have a high potential returns. So uh, see uh, bond price example, bond price changes example. Okay, uh, last one. Uh, the last one is the exchange rate determination. Uh, there are three uh, school of thought uh, about uh, exchange rate determination. First one is the what we call parity conditions. And then the second one is the balance of payments approach. And the third one is the uh, monetary approach. The parity conditions approach uh, actually say that the changes uh, in exchange rate is determined by differences, differences in uh, inflation and uh, interest rates. And while balance of payment, uh, we look at the balance of payment. Is it surplus or deficit? If it is surplus, then uh, local currency, local currency will appreciate and vice versa. And monetary approach, uh, basically how attractive, how attractive is a country is a country uh, financial assets to foreign investors. Okay. Uh, so what are the benefits of financial literacy? Uh, the first one, uh, we know how to manage our finances. We can control the use of money. We can increase our savings. And uh, we know how and where to invest. And finance, finally, we can achieve financial freedom and stability. And these are the uh, sources of financial stress. Uh, the first one is uh, household expenses and then dealing with high level of debt, paying loan to pay loan. Uh, so basically, uh, we are uh, paying loan with uh, another new loan and then struggling for short and long-term goals and uh, dealing with uh, unexpected uh, expenses. And these are the five steps to remove financial stress. First, make a budget, pay down uh, your debt, establish emergency fund, save and invest, and protect uh, yourself. And uh, these are the five steps. Uh, find out how much money is coming, where it is going. So uh, we have to... Uh, if we have that, understand the behavior of the interest, uh, the interest terms, and create a plan to pay down your debt. Uh, establish a MSG fund. Determine our uh, short, medium, and long terms uh, relating to uh, saving and investing, and protect uh, ourselves with insurance. And these are some tips uh, to managing your money. Uh, the first one is uh, save twenty percent of your earnings and don't spend more than you can earn. Control our expenditures, make budget, own a house, buy insurance, invest the money that you save, either in savings account, time deposits, government or corporate bonds, stocks, gold, foreign currencies, real estate, etc. And then guard your money from loss. Beware of investment scheme fraud. Borrow strictly on productive or entrepreneur deposits only. Sell unwanted. Uh, not use our other properties or assets and have a retirement 
as well as estate planning. So uh, that's uh, all uh, that I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Oh, very interesting. If I look Mr. Iman presentation, I remind my lecturer, Professor Suat Husnan. <laughs> what the song in the Kumilang will be to say for the famous song from the Indonesian or say Professor Tuan Yusuf Haji Osman from the University Sultan Abdul Halim Shah, Kedah, Malaysia. Time is your please, uh, Tuan. Thank you, Dr. Tengku. Uh, my uh. good friend and congratulations <laughs> for this um, international lecture collaboration. And thank you for inviting me back eh, to this yeah. international after a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, right. Um, please invite me back later. Ah, you, can, you, can, you can invite me uh, more often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Will, will be, will be. But it depends on my presentation today. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa ala ajrafi al-ajrafi wal-muslimin. Wa ala ahli wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Tanku. And uh, my, uh, my good friend, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Iman. And also uh, Dr. I will supposed to be the moderator today. Eh? <laughs> uh, our friend uh, Dr. Gumilang and all uh, dear participants uh, from Malaysia, from Indonesia, uh, S Thai. <laughs> from, from S Thailand. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Tahi, Dr. Tahi is from Thailand. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Thai. <laughs> and Makasih. also. Uh, also from uh, Uganda, from yeah. Pakistan. So, so today the audience comes from all over the world, right? Uh, right. Alhamdulillah. And we have uh, 79 uh, participants today. Masha Allah, Alhamdulillah. So I thank you uh, everybody for being here. And today I would like to share Santai-santai, uh, Dr. Tengku. Yeah, eh? betul. Relax and fun. <laughs> Relax and fun. Santai-santai <laughs> saja. I see yeah. Bu Tuti is here. Yeah, Bye. yeah. Bu yeah, Tuti. hello, Prof. How are you? Wow, good, good, nice good. to see you. Glad to, to see you. Congratulations, you. congratulations yeah, to be uh, the speaker. Thank you for speaker. coming today. Uh, yeah. So, inshallah, today we will uh, talk about uh, Islamic economics and uh, Islamic finance. Yeah. So, before we talk about Islamic economics, we need to understand conventional economics. So, what is uh, economics that we learn yeah, from the West? I studied economics at, uh, the, at the first uh, degree uh, and at master's level. 
from the US, yeah. So yeah, I got my bachelor's and my master's in economics from the US. And uh, I received my PhD in Islamic finance from Unishams. But I'm not an expert, yeah. I'm I'm just a student of uh, mm -hmm. economics and Islamic finance. So what is uh, conventional economics? So conventional economics is an economic system that gives a freedom to everyone. So it doesn't have a standard, yeah. So it just uh, whatever we study, whatever that people do. So there is no guidance, yeah? no standard. Boleh buat yang haram, boleh buat yang halal. So terpulang, mm. eh? itu mm. itu conventional economics. Yeah? Then the objective is to maximize utility for consumers to maximize utility, for producers to maximize the profit. Yeah, so that's the motive. However, in uh, Islamic economic system, uh, we have certain values, we have certain guidance. Yeah, and guidance come from the Quran and the Sunnah, from Ijma. Uh, Qiyas and other uh, sources. Yeah? So that's that's the main difference. So conventional economic system have no guidance, yeah? No divine guidance, yeah? No, no religions is involved. So every economic agent has to has the freedom. You do whatever you do as long as you know you maximize your utility and you don't hurt other people. And uh, however, in Islamic economic system, we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah, and uh, we have uh, other sources like Al Ijma, Al Qiyas, Masalik, Maqasid, Sharia, Oruf, and other sources to guide us. So, so that that's a good thing about Islam. Yeah? We know what we can do, and we know what we cannot do. So, so it's up to us. You what what. Uh, you want to do so every one of us is uh, economic agents yeah in in islamic economics uh, we don't call uh, economic agents yeah we, we we believe that um we all are the khalifa yeah like mentioned in the post so let's go back to conventional economics. so in in uh, conventional economics the problem is the problem of scarcity right scarcity there are unlimited ones and limited resources. We cannot get all that we want. Yeah? There are certain things that we desire, certain things that we want, but because of the lack of resources, we cannot get all that we want. Yeah? So we, we don't have the Aladdin left. Yeah? So with Aladdin left, kalau kita ada lampu Aladdin, eh? Tidak, tolong ini, ini, ini. Kita just gosok, kita boleh <laughs> so, so in conventional economics, there is a problem of scarcity. Kita tak boleh dapat semua kita nak. We cannot get all that we want because our wants are unlimited and our uh, resources are limited. Kita tak boleh dapat semua benda ya, Dr. Tengku. Ya? We, no. want, we want many things, but because of the limited resources, we cannot get all that we want. Yeah, betul ya? Betul. Betul, betul, eh? So, the other thing, yeah. uh, betul sekali, Prof. Uh, the, the other difference, this is my area. Okay. The other difference between conventional and Islamic economics lies in the methodology. So, in conventional economics, it's a positive uh, analysis. We study what people actually do. Yeah? How, how people maximize the utility when they consume goods, how people maximize profits when uh, they do the business, right? However, um, however, in uh, Islamic economics, we there are two analysis. One is a positive analysis, you know, analysis of what we do, okay? But in Islamic economics, there are two kinds of positive uh, analysis what we do, positive analysis, and what we should do, okay? For example, kita boleh tak minum arak according to uh, conventional analysis? Boleh kalau arak itu membuatkan kita happy, ya? Yeah? <laughs> Tapi in Islamic economy, tak boleh, ya? Yeah? Because, because it is prohibited. 
uh, in the Quran ya. So minum arak tak boleh ya. Uh, Bu Suti ya, yeah. tak boleh ya. <laughs> Alright. So where are we? Alright. So let's continue. Uh, the, uh, the third difference is uh, in terms of the motives. So in conventional economics, like uh, I mentioned before, consumers try to maximize utility. We buy products that maximize utility. Haram or halal, haram or halal is not important eh, in, in conventional economics. There is no haram, no halal. People, consumers demand what they want. Kalau, Macam ini, kalau di US, eh, kalau uh, consumers demand alcohol, producers will sell alcohol. So that is the conventional economics, no guidance. But in um, and producers just try to maximize the profit eh, in conventional uh, economics. It is assumed like that. However, in Islamic economics, consumers um, motif should be sepatutnya sepatutnya orang Islam pun bukan semua macam ini ya ya ada tertentu uh, orang Islam pun bukan semua perangai bagus ya tapi they should behave to maximize al-falah al-falah means the success in this world and the success in the hereafter tak tak ada guna kita kaya di dunia dapat semua tapi di akhirat kita uh, kita, you know, kita tak dapat kejayaan. Apakah kejayaan di akhirat? Kejayaan di akhirat ialah, of course, to enter the paradise. Ya, yeah? tidak guna kaya di dunia kalau masuk neraka. Uh, begitu ya. Yeah? So consumers motive when we buy goods, we want the goods that are halal and toyiba. Why? Because we want to be successful in this world and the hereafter. And producers should aim to maximize profit and also alfala. Bukan nak dapat untung saja, not only to gain the benefit, the, the profits, but also to be successful to enter the channel uh, in the hereafter. So akhlaq and aqidah, yeah, the belief about the hereafter is a play, uh, is very important. Yeah? So, so aqidah <coughs> and akhlaq drives the economic agents drives us what to do. Okay, halas. I'm going very fast. Huh? Is it okay? No, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so, all right. So, so, because of the time constraint. Now, let's talk about uh, the difference between conventional and Islamic uh, finance. So, in uh, conventional financing, lenders, land borrowers, yeah? Why? To make a profit from the interest charged on the principal. For example, one person or one institution give a loan to another, to, to a borrower, and the borrower needs to, to pay the interest plus the principal. So the interest is the profit. Yeah? For property loans, for example, <clears throat> borrowers pay an interest on the outstanding principal amount. However, that is the main difference between conventional and Islamic financing. Islamic financing avoids interest-based transactions. Riba is haram. And Allah says, wa halallahu bay'a wa harama riba. And instead, in Islamic finance, um, the concept of buying something on behalf of the borrower and selling back to the borrower at a profit. Yeah, for example. So that's the concept of murabaha. So in place of interest, a profit rate is defined in the contract because uh, Islam allows wahalallahu um, baya wahalrama riba. Okay. So where are we now? Okay. So Islamic finance. So what is Islamic finance then? Islamic finance refers to the provision of financial services in accordance with Sharia. It must be Sharia compliant. Must be in accordance with principles and rules of Sharia. Sharia does not permit riba. Sharia 
prohibits horror, uh, excessive uncertainty. There are prohibitions of masir, prohibition of short sales. But in Malaysia, interesting, recently, short sales uh, for certain group of people is allowed, but we don't have time to talk about it. Okay. And prohibition of financing services that is harmful to society. So in Islamic finance, the parties, both parties that enter into the aqad or contract must share the rewards, must share the risk of a business transaction. And the transaction should have a, a real economic purpose, yeah? and it should be asset-based without uh, too much uh, speculation. Horror, there are two kinds of horror. Horror fahish, horror um, maisir. So horror maisir is allowed, but horror fahish is not allowed. So we, sh so Islam um, prohibits horror fahish, excessive speculation. All right. <clears throat> Where are we? So now prohibitions in Islamic finance. Number one, prohibitions of paying or charging an interest. So Islam considers lending with interest payments or riba as exploitative practice that favors the lender at the, at the expense of the borrower. According to Sharia, interest is a uh, uh, usury yeah, or riba, which is strictly prohibited. <coughs> uh, the second prohibition is investing, investing in businesses involved in prohibited activities such as uh, you know the haram products, uh, alcohol, pork, um, and other products or services that are haram, you know. So, number one, prohibitions of riba. Number two, prohibitions of haram activities. Number three, prohibitions of gambling. Any elements of gambling involved in the contract or akad is strictly prohibited. And the provision of gharar. Like I said, there are two types. Major gharar and minor gharar. Minor gharar is, um, is allowed. However, major gharar is uh, prohibited. Okay. Now let's go very fast, eh? like uh, like um, mm -hmm. fast train, eh? because mm -hmm. I'm 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 afraid Doctor Tengku will stop me. No problem, it's good. Uh, there is a uh, <laughs> ten minute more for you. No okay. problem. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I can relax. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So um, traditionally. Traditionally, there are four components of Islamic financial system. Number one, uh, Islamic banking system, including uh, Islamic uh, money market. And second, Islamic insurance or takaful. Third is Islamic capital market. And the fourth component is uh, Islamic social finance. So, however, there are some experts that uh, include other components also. I've read um, some articles that include uh, fintech as also the components of uh, Islamic financial system. So basically, these are the four major components, Islamic banking, Islamic insurance or takaful, Islamic capital market, and Islamic social finance. I would like to talk more about Islamic social finance. Uh, previously, it was known as uh, financial inclusion. Yeah. Now, the, the term that is used is Islamic social finance. I have a book here. Yeah? Can you see? Mm. This is a book that I just uh, finished writing. It's nice. on uh, Islamic social finance and the role of Islamic social finance in helping those uh, affected by the pandemic COVID-19. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah I, I can share with you this book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <All right. clears throat> So Islamic finance also promotes socio-economic welfare, socio-economic empowerment through social tools uh, such as zakat, sadaqah, waqaf, 
Islamic microfinance, uh, Islamic crowdfunding, Sukuk, um, and uh, Qadul Hassan. So this is because in society, there are many, there are groups, yeah? there are groups of people who are not bankable, you know, they cannot, they cannot uh, uh, apply for loans. So these uh, Islamic social finance yeah, uh, can, can help those people who are poor, especially the poor and the needy. Yeah? Now we are talking about, there are many research uh, that try to examine uh, the role of Islamic social finance like zakat. In Indonesia, there are, I read there are many studies yeah, <coughs> uh, by Batnas and other researchers who tries to examine the role of zakat in um, in achieving SDGs, in achieving maqasid. Very interesting. So I, I salute the, the, the Indonesian uh, researchers. Yeah? So, so uh, in Islamic finance, there are tools or instruments like zakat, sadaqa, Islamic uh, crowdfunding. In, in Indonesia, it's, it's uh, very famous and it's, it's on the rising trend. Yeah? Wakaf also, nowadays we, we talk we talk about the power of cash work up to help other people. And Islamic microfinance is also important because it helps those people who are unbankable. Yeah? So Islamic social finance also includes social investment through sukuk and non-profit Islamic microfinance organizations that, that give out Qadr Hassan to those people who are in need. Yeah? So Islamic social finance instruments could play a vital role. Yeah? Zakat, work of Islamic uh, crowdfunding, Islamic microfinance, they can play vital role in reducing poverty, helping those people in, in, in poverty, those people you know, affected by the COVID-19. And now we are in a post COVID-19. There are people who lost their jobs. There are people who become poor before, before COVID-19, they were, the middle class now they are in the lower you know group uh, low in the poverty level yeah so uh, so zakat workoff can help in education <clears throat> also in boosting the economy in reducing the uh, uh, unemployment in helping providing uh, the proper food and and uh, reduce uh, malnutrition and, and help solve some health issues. Traditionally, Islamic social finance instruments would either be philanthropic, such as zakat, sadaqa, waqaf, Islamic crowdfunding, or it can be based on ta'awun, you know, which includes qaldu hasan. Qaldu hasan is a, is a loan given to those poor and needy, and, uh, and the, the borrower pay back the, the same uh, amount of principal. So no riba, no interest. So that is called uh, Qadr Hassan. Where are we? I'm lost. Okay, let's continue. Are we, are we here? Okay, so Islamic social finance. No. Yeah. All right. So we are here. Uh, we are almost done. Mm. So in modern times, Islamic social finance may also cover modern forms of Islamic financial services, you know, such as Islamic microfinance offered by certain banks, yeah? Islamic crowdfunding, yeah? In, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, I, I, I read uh, even in Western countries, yeah? Islamic uh, crowdfunding and Islamic uh, uh, microfinance yeah? plays important role. Um, so Islamic crowdfunding, uh, sukuk, yeah, sukuk can be used by government and NGOs yeah, to to raise funds to help to help the the poor and needy, and also certain kind of takaful. Now they combine a uh, uh, wakaf with takaful, and they combine um, uh, what hiba with taka with takaful in order to help other people, yeah. So now you can subscribe to Takaful, and then uh, you can help other people. You know they introduce like Hiba Takaful and uh, uh, Wakaf Takaful and other types of Takaful. 
Or currently, Kodor Hassan and Kafala are largely utilized in microfinance. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about zakat. Yeah. Uh, zakat is uh, very important in Indonesia. We have Basnas, yeah, who mm. I think has done lots, uh, has done a tr tremendous job yeah? uh, in in uh, utilizing zakat to achieve uh, to achieve the um, uh, sustainable development goals. And Basnas is working very closely with President Jokowi, yeah. President Jokowi invited Basnas to, to cooperate with the government to achieve some of the SDGs. Yeah. So, so Zakat and Wakaf yeah, are two significant tools that can be used. <clears throat> so one of the important features of Wakaf is that it provides flexibility in fund utilization compared to Zakat. So Zakat must be distributed to only eight asnaf, yeah, as stated in the Quran. However, Wakaf can be used to provide a wide range of welfare service to Muslims as well as to non-Muslims. So that's that's the the special features of Wakaf. Yeah? Now, uh, cash Wakaf is very important, and I have uh, several PhD students under my supervision mm -hmm. who are doing um, the study on cash Wakaf because mm -hmm. I believe cash Wakaf will play a greater role in the future. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in conclusion, the institution of Wakaf complements the institution of Zakat. They must work together. So the institution of Wakaf is also an excellent source of building religious uh, infrastructure for Muslims in, in, in non-Muslim countries. Muslims in uh, the US, Muslims in Germany, Australia, America, uh, the UK, uh, Thailand, you know. Wakaf can play an important role to build the Islamic infrastructure like, like mosque, uh, masjid Islamic uh, uh, center. I remember when I was uh, studying in the US, uh, the, we, have, uh, we had an NGO, Muslim NGO, that, uh, that used uh, uh, Wakaf yeah, to, to build the Islamic center. So, so Wakaf is a powerful tool. And even non-Muslims are very interested in studying uh, Wakaf, you know, because because the potential of Wakaf in in um, helping uh, other people. Yeah. Okay. So good. this is the last slide, eh, Doctor Tengku. I'm about yeah. to finish. Very good. <laughs> so Time the management. <laughs> so the institution of Wakaf complements the institution of Zakat. Yeah. So and uh, so, uh, in conclusion, uh, I would say that um, Islamic finance uh, have a great potential to develop in the future throughout the world. Yeah. Uh, so Islamic banking is growing. Um, uh, Islamic uh, crowdfunding is gaining the strength. Um, uh, Sukuk. Yeah, and uh, Islamic capital market, and especially Islamic social finance. And I would also like to add that um, uh, fintech, yeah, fintech is very important because it's a powerful instrument to help uh, grow the um, uh, uh, grow the uh, Islamic finance. Yeah, so in Islamic finance is 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 very wide, and it touches every aspects of our life yeah so may allah uh, give us a uh, strength yeah to support the islamic finance you know the the banking uh, the the sharia banking sector the uh, islamic insurance or takaful sector islamic capital market sector especially sukuk and islamic social finance you know zakat work of islamic microfinance Islamic crowdfunding, Qaldul uh, Hassan, Islamic um, cooperatives, yeah. Uh, so may Allah um, give us a strength. Uh, may Allah, you know, uh, help us in uh, developing uh, Islamic finance 
uh, uh, we we have to do our part. So uh, I encourage everyone of us to learn more about Islamic finance and and uh, come to study at Unisham. Sir. We have center, we have center for Islamic finance, uh, education yeah. and research. And uh, I'm one of the lecturer here. So I, I, serve, I serve as an associate professor and in Islamic finance. I have many students from Indonesia. I like Indonesian people. Indonesian me. people are very polite. Me, me. Yeah, I, I like good, good people. Yeah, I, I like everybody. They are very polite. Uh, yeah. So Dr. Right. Tengku, uh, that's, that's my you. presentation. Uh, please okay. invite me. I hope yeah. I did well, and please invite yeah. me back. Yeah? Inshallah, okay. and uh, right and sure. <laughs> okay. Wallahu ala a'lam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, right now we will go to question and answer. Therefore, I will to read the question in my email, some question, but I choose only two questions for the older speaker. Uh, the mm -hmm. first for Ibu, eh, sorry, for uh, Bapak Dr. Imam Sofian Suryawinata. Pak Imam, uh, hello, uh, uh, apa, Tuan Yusuf, you can do short down, please, the, your screen right now. For the use, okay, right. Uh, kita terus pergi ke question answer. Ini saya mau baca pertanyaan I want to read the question for the Dr. Iman uh, Sofian Surya Pinata. Uh, the, the, the question from Tiara. Uh, very interesting presentation, uh, Dr. Iman, regard the financial, uh, fundamental financial concept, especially financial literacy. Right now, while uh, digital technology coming, uh, many uh, company uh, promotion financial services by financial technology. The citizen are very uh, confused about many choice about it. What mm -hmm. your advice to use financial service where we can get maximize benefit with the low risk, especially for the startup businessmen? This is the first question. And the second, as the student university, we will work in financial industry uh, to become to investment consultant or uh, better we uh, prepare what the, the skill we, we must to prepare uh, if we want to do investment consultant jobs. This is the second question for you. And then for, uh, Tuan Yusuf, this is uh, the question from Sari. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for amazing uh, is uh, uh, conventional uh, financial versus Islamic uh, economic. Uh, I mean the conventional economic and versus Islamic economic. Uh, I am agree regard your statement that uh, conventional uh, economic only use financial for emotional as human. In ASEAN countries, mostly more uh, 400 million people, but Islamic economic do not yet as the market leader. Mm -hmm. What will we do to push Islamic economic more dominant than conventional economic? Okay, the second question, as the Muslim student in Indonesia, what you advise to prepare as early uh, professional workers after a convocation? Is there still okay if we work in the conventional banking because Islamic banking right now and in a financial Islamic institute right now is still limited? <laughs> Uh, ini satu pilihan yang tidak mudah juga. Oke, okay. uh, the first, uh, uh, itu ada lagi yang mau tanya uh, Tuan Pandu atau Mas Pandu, dia selalunya ingin uh, direct question uh, nak bagi sila. 
uh, saudara Pandu nanti kalau Ibu Tuti mau tanya pun boleh kan ini sekali sahaja round of the question and answer uh, Mr Pandu or to, uh, adik Pandu atau Mas Pandu uh, the uh, the student from stay Rawamangun ke Jakarta are you yeah, here Ya, yeah, Prof. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, eh, Prof. Ya. Yeah. I want to ask uh, Professor from Stay itu what do we do or what we Ya, yeah. what do you want to ask please? Should do if uh, economy dark because what we should or what we do if uh, economy in the world is dark because of recession and interest rate is high. What we do uh, oh. give me a, give me a face, Prof. Okay, okay. Is it the dark economy right now in the Europe and so on? What do we do? Okay, good. Uh, Ibu Tuti, are you will to uh, uh, share the question if you want uh, the last? Yeah, boleh, boleh, Prof. Boleh. boleh. Thank, yeah. Thank you very Jadi, much, Prof. Iman, ini Ibu Tuti ini mahasiswa senior PhD Unisham yang tinggalnya di Jati Waringin kalau saya tak silap. Ya, tetangganya ya. Prof Reza. Iya, <laughs> ya. beliau ini semangat belajarnya luar biasa PhD student. Oke, okay, please Bu. Ya, thank you Prof Reza. Uh, my question is addresses to Prof Yusuf, my my supervisor. Actually I can call oh, no, right. my head. <laughs> yeah. The first from the first from Lucam. Okay, the second. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Uh, you know Indonesia will be lucky if there is a what's that a spokesperson like Prof Yusuf to educate about the Sharia economy in Indonesia because as the second questioners uh, asking about why as big uh, Muslim country but the market share for the uh, Sharia business is very small only six point seventy four yeah. Uh, uh, We they have done many activities in the advertising, you know. But again, you know the market share for especially banking is still so still low. Lucky that the financial or economy Syariah growing after pandemic two years. The growth is about 13%, percent. You know, at but still dominated in financial capital. Which is okay. the education on capital is very still very very low, so I think you know we need some we need we need many people that have knowledge like Prof Yusuf to educate as a mentor as a model for the communities in Indonesia. This is not utilized yet. We have so many ustad, we have so many ulama, but they don't have any you know. <laughs> So thank you. That's my question. You have okay, you have to come you. to Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, right now, uh, there is two uh, person will be to uh, uh, share the question. I mean the the the, the second uh, Rifat and then the last uh, my senior brother, Mr. Nurdin, will be to share the direct question. Please, Rifat. Uh, was it the uh, Radat? Uh, who's the Radat? You can to. Uh, talk right now. Uh, hello, Rada. I, uh, you, 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 uh, raise hand right now. Uh, you want to? Uh, oh, this Rada is Mr. Nurdin too. <laughs> Please. Uh, siapa you. yang uh, guna uh, nama Rada? Sila mau tanya direct. Jelas. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, Mr. Yusuf, but, I would like. But, but, but your camera right now do not open if you want to show you. But your sound is clear. No problem. It can uh, start right now. All right. It is Mr. Okay. Nurdin, Mr. <laughs> Nino, brother. Okay, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Yusuf, I would like to raise a question. Maybe my question is a little bit deviated from the from the topic of your presentation. My question is, we have a, uh, a tradition in our country, we, which is called Arisan. Mm. Arisan is, uh, if we the look at the, I mean, open. Open meeting. Uh, I mean, the, the 
free translation, a regular social gathering whose members contribute to and take turns at winning an aggregate sum of money. Mm -hmm. To get the winner, to, to be a winner, sometimes the organization is doing lottery to determine the, the winner. That's it yeah. against the Sharia. How do you explain it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. It's a good question because in Indonesia, since many Arisan, every day, yeah. every week, every month, <laughs> is the collection of financial by the community base. Okay, now uh, we will to uh, learn of the uh, this answer from the Dr. Iman uh, first. Dr. Iman, uh, time is you. I hope. You can to answer the many question in the seven to ten minutes, please. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Pariza. Uh, well, the first question is about uh, digital finance uh, or digital yes. banking. So uh, again, my my response to the question is: uh, it depends on your uh, risk appetite. Uh, mm. If your objective is to control risk, then uh, I would suggest you to invest in. Uh, digital banking that is, uh, you know, uh, strong and related to the uh, government uh, uh, government uh, banks like Bank Mandiri, BNI, or, or even some some of, uh, you know, private banks like uh, BCA. There is a BCA Digital. So if, if, if the objective uh, is to control risk, then, then invest or put your money in, you know, uh, in uh, large banks. And permanent mm -hmm. banks, but if yeah. the objective is to maximize your return, then uh, there are a lot of uh, fintech company out there, mm -hmm. which, uh, which is uh, high risk and high return. So yeah. it depends on your risk appetite. Uh, that right. that's the first question. The second question is about uh, a career in financial consultant, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, regarding financial uh, uh, consultant, uh, there are two two you know. Uh, two lines of uh, opportunities, uh, whether you want to become financial co consultant for corporations or for individuals. Uh, 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 I think the, the uh, becoming a financial uh, consultant for individuals will provide uh, more, you know, job opportunities and, and uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll provide you more uh, job opportunities. Uh, uh, but then again, uh, you need a certification so, mm -hmm. so, such as, uh, you know, wealth management uh, certification. Uh, that, that's uh, my opinion. Uh, to become a financial consultant for corporations, maybe you have to join uh, a big uh, consulting company like uh, Pricewaterhouse, uh, uh, Morgan Stanley, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my answer for the uh, second uh, questions. And uh, for the third question, what to do uh, uh, during the era of dark economy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the answer is simple, Pak pa Pandu, mm -hmm. uh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, save money. Save money and control your expenditure. <laughs> Wait for, for the right moment. And if you have money, if you have money, uh, a lot of money, then buy assets. That this is the time, the good time to, to buy assets. So I think that, that, that was the uh, that uh, all questions, Pak Pariza. Yeah, right. Thank you very much for smart answer. And the second speaker will be to answer uh, Dr. Yusuf. Please. Uh, Dr. Teku, uh, there are many questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> and all of them are difficult questions. <laughs> Okay. So, so question number one is about the um, the uh, low market share of uh, Islamic banking yeah, throughout the world. And it, it is true also for for Takafu, yeah, it's true also for Zakat and Wakaw. So that that is the dilemma or the issues that we are facing. So like Abu Tuti mentioned, uh, my, my research uh, has focused on these issues uh, mm -hmm. that we call the low compliance. So for example, Abu Tuti is uh, under my supervision and she is trying to find the factors that uh, influence the <laughs> non-compliance towards um, 
Islamic banking. Macam di Indonesia, <coughs> di Indonesia the, the Muslim population is very high. Yet the market share and the total deposit, yeah, the aggregate total deposit in Sharia is lagging behind. Masih jauh ketinggalan. Yeah? Yeah. Kenapa? Yeah. Yeah? Kenapa? Uh, itu yang kita kena kaji. Um, jadi datang buat PhD di Unisham. <laughs> Allah says in the Quran, "Aaud bilahi min al-shaytani rajim, wa ahalla Allahu al-bai'a, wa harrama riba." Yeah, and Allah permits al-bai' sales, wa harrama riba, and prohibits riba. So uh, there must be studies on 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 the factors. Why people don't comply with the Quran? Yet there are Muslims who, who still, you know, adapt, who still accept the conventional banking. Yeah, that is the question mm. that we need to study. Mm. Kenapa orang Islam masih lagi berurusan dengan riba? Allah mentions in the Quran already, right? The same as uh, uh, insurance, yeah. Di Malaysia, insurans telah lama difatwakan sebagai haram. Non syariah compliant. Tapi masih ramai lagi ya. Tuan-tuan tengku, mm -hmm. ramai orang Islam yang, yang masih memilih insurans. Ya, mereka masih tidak memilih takaful. Sebagai mm -hmm. pada mereka, some of them says, oh takaful and insurans are the same. It's not the same. Takaful is halal, insurans is Haram, right? So we we as Muslims we must comply to the guidance by Allah. So uh, I'm uh, I have four more years to uh, to work, yeah, uh, Doctor Tengku, and I I want to spend the rest of my career in uh, studies relating to these uh, issues. Yeah, kenapa ramai orang tidak membayar zakat? Kenapa faktor-faktor menentukan kenapa ramai orang tidak um, orang tidak mengeluarkan uh, wakaf ya tidak contribute to wakaf kenapa masih ramai orang tidak mau menggunakan uh, syariah bank kenapa ramai orang tidak mau menggunakan takaful kenapa tidak menggunakan arrohnu di Malaysia masih ramai yang tidak menggunakan arrohnu ya uh, kita ada pilihan. Now we give choices to Muslims. Yet, uh, we find that uh, according to our research, the, the compliance is very low but among the Muslims. Bermaksud, ramai orang Islam masih lagi tidak mahu menggunakan Islamic finance. So we are still in the process of studying. Hopefully in the future, with the research, with the knowledge, we'll, we'll plan, we strategize, we implement suitable policies and may Allah give us strength, you know, to to, uh, to help us uh, to grow this uh, Islamic finance sector, yeah? Uh, okay. okay, so the, the second question is uh, about working in a conventional bank, yeah? Haram atau halal, yeah? yeah. So, secara ringkasnya, Bekerja dengan bank yang konvensional, ya, um, sekiranya, uh, okay, um, jadi ringkasnya begini ya, mereka yang bekerja di konvensional bank yang terlibat secara terus, ya, dengan kontrak yang melibatkan riba maka hukumnya adalah haram. Ya. Tetapi terdapat banyak kerja dalam bank konvensional yang tidak berkaitan secara langsung dengan riba. Yes. Contoh, contohnya bekerja sebagai computer science, ya, ataupun juru jual, ataupun uh, accountant, ataupun Transfer. research, atau pengawal keselamatan, ya, dekat. If if the job is not Uh, directly involved with riba is okay. Tapi kalau the job is directly involved with riba, uh, terlibat secara langsung dengan 
and the the writing of the uh, contract including riba that is that is haram um, bagaimana penyelesaiannya jadi di sini yang perlu kita faham adalah larangan untuk bekerja dalam konvensional bank adalah bagi pekerjaan yang secara terus menerus melibatkan penyediaan kontrak riba, jaminan dan sebagainya. Adapun bagi jabatan-jabatan yang tidak secara terus terlibat dengan riba seperti jabatan IT, audit sebagainya jabatan keselamatan adalah diharuskan. Jadi kesimpulannya bekerja dengan bank berasaskan riba bukanlah pilihan kerja bagi seseorang muslim. Dibenarkan bekerja dalam bidang ini hanya jika didapati betul-betul sukar untuk mencari kerja yang halal untuk mencari rezeki. Paling baik adalah berusaha untuk meninggalkan pekerjaan ini pada ketika menemui kerja atau tempat kerja yang lebih sesuai dan diyakini. Katakan sekarang ini, tidak ada pilihan. Terpaksa bekerja juga. Boleh tetapi perlu ada usaha yang serius untuk mencari pekerjaan di tempat yang lain. Dan okay. jika, jika dapat pekerjaan di tempat lain, cepat-cepat berhenti ya dan pergi ke tempat lain. Ya. Itu soalan yang last. The last about the collection of community of LIS Arisan in Indonesia say from Mr. Nurdin. Okay. Al-hukmu ala syai an tasawurihi. The ruling on on something must be based on the uh, tasawur or the picture of it, the whole the whole knowledge about it. So, um, in order for me to uh, give the hukum or ruling, I need to know more about this. Um, uh, I didn't I didn't understand. Um, All the questions and, and uh, is this, how uh, we operate. Uh, Mr. Nudin, I mean, in Indonesia, is many community is collecting of fund, and then uh, every member of the community is the, the winner uh, uh, every month, and it, they use the, the financial for the consumption and so on. But this is not by uh, interest. But uh, from what from what I understand. Eh? Uh, it involves uh, elements of uh, gambling or myself yeah so so if uh, it involves uh, the element of gambling or myself then it is prohibited in islam i'm not really sure how it works yeah so uh, this is not not by gambling because only to uh, you, you know uh, every uh, member of the community is can to use uh, first the financial from Uh, this uh, day friend and then so on uh, the, the the second one the third one is only rolling of the use uh, financial by not by the interest only pure the use uh, money from the friend of the community the name of arisan only right okay okay oh i see now i understand yeah. so for example every member of a, of a group right So yeah. they contribute um, every month the money, and yeah. then this person will will get the money in uh, month number one, the second person uh, um, month number two, and so on, right? Yes, right. Okay, in Malaysia we call kutu. Oh, tutu, yeah, right, tutu. We call kutu, <laughs> kutu. Kutu. In, in Indonesia, what do you call it? Arisan. Arisan. A R I S E N. Arisan. Arisan. Okey. Apakah hukum berkaitan dengan arisan ya? Hmm. Pada asalnya bermain arisan ini adalah dibenarkan. Hmm. Selagi mana tidak ada riba, selagi mana tidak ada kezaliman dan selagi mana tidak ada unsur yang haram. Ya? Uh, in in uh, uh, in certain places is called jumu aya is called jumu aya yeah uh, 
uh, in Malaysia it's called kutu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kutu. Yeah, yeah. This uh, is the benefit for the all the uh, member of a community. Okay. Yeah. So it, okay. it is allowed dibenarkan selagi tidak ada uh, elemen penindasan, kezaliman, uh, riba. Uh, no, no. Tidak ada elemen itu maka dibenarkan okay. um, uh, okay. dibenarkan dibenarkan arisan itu ya. Uh, yes. Mana pak? Um, jadi sebab cumanya saya menasihatkan supaya setiap uh, ahli itu uh, membuat uh, satu konsen ya memberi persetujuan memberi persetujuan ya ya ya, ya itu memberi... pasti karena memang itu sudah merupakan sebuah uh, kesepakatan jadi tidak ada orang yang merasa diberatkan dan sebagainya oke okay. thank you tuan isu for jadi, your smart answer kesimpulannya uh, arisan itu adalah harus ya Ya. Selagi, selagi tidak ada Boleh. selagi tidak ada unsur-unsur yang haram ya selagi ya. tidak ada unsur-unsur yang haram bisa maka... saya tambahkan Pak Pak Reza sedikit sedikit oh. aja oh, satu. begini uh, untuk menentukan pemenang pemenang, pemenang yang mendapatkan uang itu kadang-kadang dia lakukan lotre lotre itu mestinya ada taruhan untung rugi apakah itu haram atau pelanggar sebenarnya kalau loteri itu saya kata tadi harus bukan ini lagi. ini loteri bukan untuk dia mendapat wang tak balik lagi tapi untuk siapa awal yang boleh menggunakan itu nah, sahaja ya, betul, betul betul itu itu bukan loteri ya, ya. itu bukan loteri itu, itu adalah, adalah undian, ad undian ya. itu itu adalah dalam riset uh, disebut uh, Uh, se sebagai simple random sampling lah. Ya, <laughs> Macam ya, ya. lah. Okay, good. No, because uh, time it, is limited. It, it, <laughs> uh, it must be simple random sampling, ya? Yeah? Ya, yeah, betul. And okay, must, okay. Must, must, must not be any prohibited elements, yeah, ya? Ya, yeah, right. Jangan ada lottery, ya? Tak yeah, boleh ada bukan, lottery. Bukan. Okay, now the closing remark from the first speaker, Dr. Iman uh, Sofian Suryanata, uh, satu dua minit before. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for the all the uh, audiences, all the participants. Uh, I hope that what I what I have uh, shared uh, today uh, would be uh, beneficial uh, for all the participants. Uh, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, welcome. It's very uh, interesting presentation.